Welcome, everybody, to the Arizona News Show. Ruby is not with us today. She had to travel out of state. So we are just uh, going to plow through it as best we can. But before we get started, uh, I want to do a couple Thank things. One, I want to show you our sponsor from uh, Red Hog Media. Got a quick little video here. And I'm um, going Voila. If you're a real estate agent, we highly recommend them. Or if you have a small business, uh, they do anything and they also do portraits for people. So give them a call and uh, they're fantastic. Give them some business. But now what I have to do before I get to the Cromford report, I have to pay a debt. Um, <laughs> I paid my dollar to Pat because I bet you guys that rates would not go down into the fives in the first quarter. And uh, so Jackie, I'm going to, I'm going to pay you this, so, you know. Oh, how the heck did oh, that you? happen? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, you didn't turn your dollar into $10 like I did the other day, but. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, everybody's been reaching out to Pat trying to get Thanks some kind of, uh, you know, growth advice. program going, so. <laughs> well, let's get rocking and rolling. I want to go through a few quick numbers because. Remember I showed in December how the, the Crawford market index was coming up and I said, you know, if we start getting more inventory, that number is going to turn down. Well, that part's true, except we didn't get more inventory. <laughs> <laughs> and so so when you look, uh, if you look at the demand index here, so I'm going to share something really interesting. Here's a, demand index is 72.3. OK, mm -hmm. now go to supply. And supply is 72.8. Now, take a look at these numbers going back to 2007, 2008. Supply was 212. Demand was 58. So demand was 20 points lower than where we are today. Yet supply was, instead of 70 two got up to 213 and that is a formula for prices to crash right now we're seeing prices down um to we're down at pri the same price as we had 14 months ago november of 2021 was that no hmm. okay. for it to be november 2020 so 2021 2021 yeah mm -hmm. so i'm getting my years mixed up but <laughs> What's, what's happening now, it all blends together after a while, right? So look at the listings under contract since after, after right around Christmas time, things started going up. And uh, that's, that's quite a huge jump. And then you look here and you still see our listings are still coming down. We're at the 16,100 again. And, uh, and then we look here, here's our median sales price. Somebody asked me about that yesterday. Went from uh, 480 to 425, and hey, the av average sales price is down like 15 percent. So, hey Rick, yes. So the the other day, just to kind of go off what you're saying, I dug into MLS a little bit, and of the 16,000, we still had about 9,000 of those that were vacant. So then I dug a little deeper, and I was wondering how much of that is new built. So when I put in built 22 or newer. It was only about 2,900. I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. And then now, now, so you, so you got 2,900, right? Mm -hmm. And then, and then uh, you've got a thousand, which are eye buyers. Mm -hmm. So you're up to 39. So we have about 5,000 homes that are vacant. And so you wonder what are, they aren't long-term rentals. No, but I did see a lot of low end that were vacant. It was more low end heavy. So when you say low end, what price range? I, you know what? A lot of those consisted of manufactured homes. Yes. I saw a lot of over 55 manufactured homes. Um, and really, once you got about above 450, uh, pretty much everything was below 450, the, the chunk of it. But then, you know, you had some above, but the big chunk of it. Yeah, that's what I noticed when I got through the I, I did 
vacant and then I'm scrolling it. I did scroll forever to get past the manufactured homes. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Tons of manufactured homes and it's lots of the 55 plus. Yeah. Yeah. So my buddies. So, um, Pat looked like it was a fairly decent day for rates. Is it? Yeah, it was. It was, um, we saw the five and a half no coupon dollars. up 23 basis points. Mm -hmm. No more. Yeah. The dollar's done. No more yeah. dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna increase the bet. I'm gonna increase the bet next time to like ten or twenty, but um, <clears throat> no, I mean the, the five and a half was up twenty three basis points. The year the Treasury was down sixteen basis points, which means it's a positive day. And you saw, obviously, it's like I said, the last couple last couple weeks since really November tenth, we've been kind of stuck in this rate channel. Um, you know, they've improved. You know, they've improved nicely from January sixth to here. I mean, that's. Let's see, 120 or 100, 100.20 versus 101.55. So about 130 basis points uh, recently. So uh, things are looking up and up. I mean, um, we, I guess the bonds had a good day because the Bank of Japan didn't make a move. They met and they di didn't do anything. Um, so it just seems as though, you know, things have kind of, we're not having these chaotic days, which is good. And I think oh, it's yeah. giving people, I think if you see less volatility in rates, it just seems like to me, like people out, out there are like, okay, we're, the, the storm has passed, so to speak, short term, and we're going to get out there and look. It seems like there's activity out there. Yeah. And, and you know, Jackie, you, you kind of pegged this a few months ago when, uh, in fact, people were kind of beating you up a little bit. I keep so optimistic, <laughs> yeah. but it's really kind of come to fruition, hasn't it? It has. And you know what? There was, and, and I understood why people were kind of giving me a hard time. And I was talking to other agents too, that everybody was just bent that there was going to be a major crash and you can't have a major crash without the inventory. We all knew the rate lock was going to happen. I think a lot of the market people that were, and I think the reason our demand is down right now is because I think COVID pulled a lot of, and the low interest rates pulled a lot of buyers forward that might have been thinking about in the next year or two purchasing a home. I think that they went ahead and did it because the rates were so phenomenal. And so, yeah, you know, I, I've been saying the whole time, I, I don't see a crash unless something astronomical happens. Um, you know, we could have huge job loss. There's things that could still happen. It's not like we're, I'm saying we're totally out of the woods, but uh, there was a lot of buyer pent up buyer demand that was sitting on the sideline. I know how many first time home buyers we worked with that people just threw their hands up in the air and they rented. And, you know, with rents being so high, even though they've come down some, they're still very high compared to prior to COVID. And so, you know, I, I think now that people are kind of feeling settled in, they don't see as much volatility in the market. They're feeling a little bit more comfortable. Fives are not bad interest rates. They're not. I mean, you know, six, seven percent, the market was moving. Uh, not not, not the last six, seven percent, but. But the other I've got this lender. Is, I don't I don't remember a time where there was this many people waiting to buy. Right. 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 Yeah. Seems like there is. I mean, that kind of goes we, with our theory that we talked about all those, you know, buyers that got pushed out that are just like, right. okay, they got pushed out. If you think about it, they start getting pushed out. They're uh, really on their one year lease. You know, they in November, December, January, February. You know, they probably renewed their lease last year. I'm like, okay, we're gonna see mm -hmm. what happens. They're already, they're, you know, a year. A year goes quick. <laughs> you know, it's just uh, a, phenomenal. I, I got a guy. I mean, just to jump in. I'll go I want ahead. to plug in. I mean, I just ran uh, one of the other LOs said there's a lender. I'm not going to mention names, but, you know, uh, they're, they got a 10 year arm that's five, five and eighth. Wow. Yeah. Actually, you can get in the fours. <laughs> if you, <laughs> I ran it, um, you know, for jumbo or actually even for smaller than jumbo. But um, yeah, it was like a 10 year arm was starting to come back uh, once in a while. And that's the great thing about being a broker. You can, you see these lenders come in and out of the market. Uh, There's one lender that I had a couple months ago that was in the market real strong with that six month arm. They went away, but then this other lender came in back in with this 10 year, 10 year arm. And the pricing is 
if I showed you the pricing chart, the, disparance, the discrepancy between them and the next two or three lenders, it's like $20,000. It's crazy. You know, that, and that lender might reset? stay there for a bit. Uh, 10 years. When does it start to it's reset? 10? Okay. Uh, in 10 years. Yeah. Plenty of time. <laughs> so anyway, can, I just want you, to put that plug can in. Can you so. refinance at any time during that 10-year period? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Definitely That's a 10-year arm. But decent product. Yeah, I mean, it just but this sort of show you. If, I mean, for uh, I priced out a um, a jumbo like seven seven twenty six, and it was, you know, low fives. You know, it's like wow, okay, <laughs> we're back in the game. So well, I, I tried to look up some plug. numbers on because everybody's saying, well, Rick, there's a recession coming, and I'm like, yeah, well, you know, it across those re all of those recessions that we've had that have occurred since 1980, we had. Home prices dropped in four out of the five recessions. And the house price dip was 5% for each year the economy re remained down. In some cases, the drop was huge. In the Great Recession, the average home price dropped nearly 13%. So I think we can say we've we've already experienced that. Um, you know, we had kind of a housing recession here. and uh, But it doesn't always equate to when there's job losses that we get flooded with with housing and inventory and it, and that's historical data from the 80s so um well i think you know if you think about it data is coming in the data is never going to be perfectly clean if you think about it you know we're not going to say oh we're here now we're going to do this there's just a lot of stuff out there you have to decipher and there's there's any you know to jet your points i mean you and I all through, you know, I know Jackie was more optimistic and, you know, several months ago. I mean, uh, you and I, Rick, were kind of like, okay, pull back the reins. But there, there seems to me signs that, hey, there's a lot of demand out there. And, you know, when it, people are trying to pick the bottom and it's like, hey, if you want to buy a house, just buy it. It just shows you just buy a house because you're never going to have that perfect data on any given day that says, oh, my God, this is the perfect day to be buying a house. You're never, I've never seen it. Yeah. Yeah, it's you know, not going to show up. The, the bell isn't going to ring, right? So. Yeah, the recession, we get the recession and, you know, what's this? And it's always, everything, every segment of the market's moving in, you know, little different ways. And you're like, you're never going to have that perfectly in sync. Okay, here's the time. The only time I ever saw it was when nobody wanted to buy. And that was like in uh, June, July of 2011. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not getting in. Are you crazy? Yeah. I'm never getting into real estate again. I'm going to rent. Yeah. So, you know, there's another trend like I'm seeing, and that is that a lot of companies are calling their employees back to the office. And yep. uh, I saw that. Yeah. And, and they're getting which a lot of pushback. You know, you I mean, know, it depends on the industry, but they are getting pushback saying, I don't I don't want to come back. And so, <laughs> so they're, they're kind of pushing and going, well, the pay will be more if you're in the office. So yeah, like okay, well we'll see. Yeah, see what happens. Um, hey, to chime, to kind of jump in real quick. I, you know, Barry Habib had said, and uh, just in terms of the inflation recessionary talk that we've been, they said the December PPI report showed that the overall P producer inflation decreased 0.5 percent, which was much cooler than the p minus 0 0.01, 0 0.1 percent drop expected year over year. Inflation declined from a do downwardly revised 7.3 to 6.2, this was much lower than the 6.8% expected and is a 1.1% drop from the previous reading. He says, think about the progress that has been made on the producer inflation side of things. The re This reading was 11.7 at its peak, and now it's almost half of what it was. So it just it seems like retail sales are down, inflation's down, so it seems like we're kind of going into that slow period, but... Um, once again, if people are waiting for rates to drop, then you're going to have demand come back in. Well, we're, exactly. so. it, especially if we don't have the inventory. And typically yeah. by the second or third week of January, our inventory is starting to build. And across the board, everybody I'm talking to, to nationwide, same issues. There, There's some areas that are starting to see multiple offers again. And I pray to God that we don't get into that scenario yeah. here. And, yeah, me too. That was know, awful. And I'm still sucks. talking to some people that are, are telling me, you know, buyers that are like, well, when do you think prices are going to come down more? When do you think prices are going to come down more? I'm like, look, 
The bottom line is I can't tell you what the future holds. What I can tell you is that I'm seeing buyer demand up, mortgage applications are up, and inventory is dropping. So, yeah, mortgage applications went up 27%. Yep. Mm -hmm. 25%. 20, 25? 25? 20, 20, yes. I guess we're talking Close. to a couple of cool, cool guys yesterday, and they were saying, man, I hope prices come down some more. And I said, you know, I don't blame you, uh, but I just right now uh, I'm not – I'm not seeing it. We they came down in December, they came down in November, but now they're 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 in a holding pattern. So mm -hmm. we prices probably can come down, you know, one percent a month easily just because of low volume. Um, but I said I I think the worst of it is in the rearview mirror. Mm -hmm. Now you can wait and you can keep going. And I'm and I'm not you know we're going to get beat up and all these real estate agents they just want people to buy. I just I'm just saying what the numbers are showing us right now. And it, it could be, mm -hmm. you know, it, something can show up a black swan event and change all this. And we all know, as we go back and look at the predictions that we've made long-term, we've kind of been all over the map, but I think in the short term, we've, we've shared, you know, what it is that we saw, what it means in the short term. And it's telling you that January and February, uh, there's absolutely nothing out there that's going to put huge downward pressure on pricing. Uh -huh. It didn't have to show up real quick for that to happen. I mean, I, yeah. we've got, remember, we tracked the seven-day moving average, and we'd see listings were down on Monday, down on Tuesday. They always went up on Wednesday. Uh -huh. And this Wednesday, they didn't go up. They went down. Right. It's just weird. I mean, it just, it's strange. And on talking about weird, <laughs> showed a house yesterday. This is, this is just a box here. Oh, my wow. God. And they put the oven and stove there and, you know, and it kind of cut off where you can go into your living room and it just, the, and then over where the stove or where the, the stove top is, there was room for the oven down there and room, room for the microwave up on top. And I just couldn't help but look at these thing going, why? <laughs> and then it was really weird. I wish I could open up this door here in this picture, but you open up the pantry and they had the shelving. And they had a little garbage can in there rather than lift, take out the bottom shelf and just put the garbage can in there. They cut a section out of the shelf to <laughs> fit the garbage, the garbage can. can. But <laughs> why, the whole house was pieced together like that. Why on God's earth would you want to put your garbage can with your food? That, that makes no sense. Speaking of food, nice segue, Jackie. Okay, Remember I didn't yesterday even know. we said we took chat or last week chat GPT to write a polite letter to Pat. Mm -hmm. I like to cook, so today I thought I'd experiment with it. And uh, and I said, I go, uh, can you make a good recipe for chicken breast? Boom, I got it. Wow, no way. Now, once <laughs> you ask that question about a recipe, now I'm going to put it in shut up, but see what it does. And uh, an error occurred. They're having some network problems. There's so many yeah. people on it. So, but it uh, um, it's it just gave me this great easy chicken recipe. So I'm gonna, I, I, and you can save them. So I'm just gonna start saving recipes. I'm just gonna go salmon, <laughs> halibut. You know? Do you, do you have one? Can you ask him how to figure women out? That oh lord, I did, but it's still running. <laughs> <laughs> It's, 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 it's <laughs> good one. Fortunately, my processor's handling it, but it's 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 going in the background. <laughs> it's still circling, yeah. Okay, circling. good one. It'll probably be going next week too. All right, what's yeah? That? We'll, we'll check in next week. In see next what it week. says. <laughs> yeah, I got a uh, feeling that I could email it to you, but I'd have to zip it because the file would be too large. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Now that's not oh, saying anything funny. bad about women. That's saying we just no, nope, no, nope, we love. Them. I'm <laughs> you just, just saying. Don't understand us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so oh. funny stuff. So there isn't, um, there really isn't any new data coming out next week that's going to shift the market, except maybe just a news story that said that Jerome Powell is recovering. Well, well the PPI, PPI is next week. The PPI is coming out 27th. Or P PCE, uh, personal consumption. So PE. So that's good. That next week, the twenty seventh is going to be the next set of numbers they're looking at. But like I said, once we're trout, we're we're um, trading in this range. It's uh, 
it's been good to see it, uh, you know, it's, you got short term little run ups and uh, it's been a, it's been a lot more calming rather than seeing you wake up one day and you see the market down 75 or 80 basis points or 90 basis points. It's like, it's tough. Once again, I think we talked about this a couple months ago where if you get the rates calming down, it gives people at least confidence on the sales side too to say, hey, okay, I can get this rate. I can feel comfortable because people couldn't list their home and see what rate they're going to get to buy another house. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's uh, um, and we still got all these jobs coming here, but then this water situation is uh, I've uh, been reading. You know, Jackie, you sent me an article about that again this morning, and uh, and that's that's starting to really raise its ugly head. You know, years down the road because they uh-huh. oh oh we can't build there now, and and uh, yeah. you know especially out in the far west now there's plenty of building already on the books. Don't get me wrong; it's already been approved. The water's been approved. And uh, but beyond that, they're saying, no, nope, we're we're in trouble. And I just checked the water levels at Lake Powell today. Uh, they do have a website where you can you can you go out there and put that. a stick on. You put a I stick did. In the and then I drove yeah. back here to do the show. Um, so <laughs> excellent. I, uh, yeah. I mean, I plowed right through the snow and everything. And uh, so I went up and measured it. Here it is. But it's it's good it's for you. Down. With all the rain and snow and everything we're getting. It's it's still down. It said that. It's down 9.98 feet from a year ago. Wow. Ouch. Wow. Holy. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. And it, it looked like that while I was up there. Um, so it's what? It's only um, 10 hours away? Something like that. Yeah. Not yeah, bad. I, I got up early. Um, so it was, uh, <laughs> it, was, it, was worth, it was worth taking a peek at. Well, guys, thank you very much. We will be back at it next week. And uh, do me a favor. Don't log off. Okay.